And yes, um, what this is all about, it's all about picture telling. And I wonder if any of you have heard about this technique before. This is a technique that I refer to um, as picture telling. It's a way to use images in the classroom. It's a communicative way to use images in the classroom. And I'm, I'm sure that many of you, if not all of you, have a passion for using images and visual materials. Am I right? Teachers tend to be quite passionate about visual materials, don't we? We know a good thing when we see it. Um, picture talk, exactly. Let me describe a picture telling activity to you. A standard picture telling activity starts with you, the teacher, standing at the front of the classroom with an image in hand so that you can see it, but your students cannot. So we've instantly got an information gap. And uh, that's really how it starts. So the first activity I've got for you is called Safe and Protected or Sad and Lonely. And we're going to start this with a song. Um, I wonder if you know this song. I'm not going to sing it to you. I'm just going to hum it to you. It goes like this. Dum, dum, do, dum, do, dum, do, dum. Can you identify the song? Can you write the, the line in the text if you can? I'll do it again. Dum, dum, do, dum, do, dum, do, dum. Yes, you've got it. You've got it. Who's the first? There's so many, there's so many people in the chat. I'm going to go up and try and find the first one. Um, the first person to get, yes, it was Julia was the first person to type in the complete sentence. Uh, almost raindrops are falling on my head. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Did, did, when I sing to my students, they usually say, please, no more. But it doesn't put me off. <laughs> so this is an activity called safe and protected or sad and lonely and this is an image that I'm looking at um, you can't see this image but I can we mentioned that's what it's all about and I'm looking at this picture it's on my mobile phone and this is a picture it's a photograph it's actually a wildlife photograph and when I look at this photograph, and I really, really love this photograph, I've spent a lot of time working with this, I always think of that song, raindrops keep falling on my head. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through, or perhaps walk you through this image, okay? So all you have to do, as my good students, pretend you're my students, all you've got to do is listen and try to create this um, image recreate this image in your head. But I'm going to make things a little bit easier for you. This is something I do for my students a lot. Um, I'm going to give you what I like to refer to as a story pathway. What you see in front of you is what I refer to as a story pathway. And a story pathway is quite simply a series of words or phrases that students are going to meet when they hear a story or in this case, here, a description of a picture, okay? And they're all in the chronological order, the order that you're going to meet them. And I really like this activity, or rather I should say, I really like this technique, because what this does is it allows us to bring into play certain words or phrases that students are going to meet in the story, which is a great way to introduce them, to present them, to pre-teach them perhaps, to prime students for this language, also, it gives students a sort of idea linguistically about where this story or where this description is going. And I'm going to guess whether or not I ask you to make some kind of prediction, that does not matter because you're already doing that. You're already looking at these phrases and you're thinking, hmm, what is this image all about? And um, what is the, 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 the tiny creature, perhaps? And even if you don't have a definitive answer yet, you've probably got some ideas because that's how the brain works. It's impossible to shut off the imagination. Right. I'm now going to tell you, I'm going to talk you through the image. This is the picture telling. This is the picture telling. So, as I mentioned, this image that I'm looking at on my mobile phone, the one that I can see but you cannot, is a wildlife photograph. I love this photograph. Um, it's a close-up, a close-up 
of a brilliant green leaf. And this brilliant green leaf in this photograph is covered, covered with raindrops. And these raindrops, they look like little glass balls. It's so beautiful. And here's the best bit. Inside one of these raindrops, there is a tiny creature. And it looks quite happy. It looks quite happy chilling out in its raindrop, you know. Maybe it feels safe, unprotected, at peace with the world. But then, what do I know? How do I know that? Maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe it feels sad and lonely. Maybe it feels anxious and worried about the state of the planet, you know. And, you know, as I look at this picture, as I look at this beautiful photograph, I wonder... How did this tiny creature get into the raindrop? Did it, did it crawl in? Or did the raindrop fall on its head? Like the song, you know the song? Raindrops keep falling on my head. Shut up, Jamie. Sorry. And I also wonder, how long can it stay in there? How long can this tiny creature stay inside that raindrop? How long does it have before the raindrop dries up. And you know what this task is, you know? You might be thinking, when I describe what a picture telling is, you might be thinking, ah, yes, this sounds like a picture dictation. Did anyone think about that? Did anyone think, ah, this is like a picture dictation? And it very much is like a picture dictation, but you don't have to draw. Although you could, but I prefer the canvas to be the student's mind's eyes, you know, so that really what we're doing is we're creating a picture through the imagination. And you've all got a picture in your head right now, haven't you? And you've all got some kind of answer to that question. What is this tiny creature? And I've been reading your answers. Um, Petra said an ant. Um, Joanna said, hello from the Netherlands. Hello, Joanna. Monica says a ladybird. Um, a ladybug, a ladybird, a ladybug. Which do you prefer, ladybugs or ladybirds? Um, Ron says a mosquito larvae and a water bubble in the Amazon. My, that is specific. Um, Kata says a frog. Janice says uh, a frog. We've got spiders, we've got incy wincy spiders, butterflies, grasshoppers, fish. These are a, <laughs> a cute rabbit. Could a cute rabbit fit inside a raindrop? And there's at this stage, you see, one, one thing I noticed when teachers use um, images, one very standard um, language point is they will say, use the image to teach models of deduction, you know? And in my mind, models of deduction come into story and images so often that it, it, we don't actually have to make it the center point. It, it could do it right now. For example, could it be a fly? Could it be a cute rabbit? Surely it can't be a cute rabbit. A cute rabbit would be too big to fit in a raindrop. Could it be an elephant? Of course not. It can't be an elephant. Could it be a fish? It might be a fish. It could be a fish. Could it be a caterpillar? Could it be an insect? No, I don't think it can be an insect because insects can't breathe underwater. Could it be a frog? Well, yes, it could be a frog. Would you like to see the picture? <laughs> That's a stupid question, isn't it? I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask Louisa if she could share the screen and uh, show us the picture of this close-up of this brilliant green leaf and this tiny creature. And it is. Wait for it. Drum roll. <laughs> Dying to see it. Ah, there it is. This is a wildlife photograph and what Luisa is doing right now is she's sharing her screen. She's sharing a link on the Guardian website. You know the Guardian, uh, a British newspaper. And uh, some people said a frog. And absolutely, it's it's a frog. Isn't, I mean, you know, I think this is a, I love this photograph, but I would always, always, always persuade teachers you know, don't assume that your students will love the videos, love the images, love the materials that we choose. And I might tell students I love it, but I'll always invite them to, to maybe disagree because who knows, some people might hate frogs, right? Is there anybody here who doesn't like frogs? Any, any, any non-frog lovers? I love frogs.
You know, people say that you should always stop to smell the roses. Have you heard that expression? Always stop to smell the roses, to appreciate life. Well, I don't like roses, quite frankly, but I love frogs. And I say you should always stop to poke a frog. If you see a frog in the street, always stop to give it a poke because there's something really special about a frog leaping forward at the touch of your finger. It is, it's, it's really special. It's, it is life-affirming. <laughs> so what I did, I'm going to let you into a little secret at this stage, because when I was describing this photograph to you, in fact, really, I was reading a text from my mobile phone. It could have been from my iPad. It couldn't be my phone. Let me show you the text. This is the text right here. You see? <laughs> I'm a cheat. Make our lives easier. Make your lives easier for yourselves, you know? Students don't have to know that you're reading a text, but the important thing is, and I can't stress this enough, when you're doing a picture-telling activity, it's really, really important that you prepare your text. You know, you want to work with the image and you want to prepare a text. And you want to look for useful language choices and you want to ask questions about the image. And that's exactly what we're doing here. And so you, you can see that those um, phrases in bold were the phrases that I gave you beforehand. So you also want to be able to incorporate those phrases into the picture telling tech. So that's what we did. But you've got to do it naturally. You've got to have your eyes in the photograph, but eyes back up on your students, like I hope I was demonstrating. And we also have, and um, once you show students the image, in this case, there's certain questions we can ask for discussion, aren't there? For where do you think this photograph was taken? You know, the one that you just saw with the frog in the raindrop. Do you think the frog is happy in the raindrop or not? You know, giving you an opportunity to answer some of the questions that I put to you. What do you think the frog is thinking about? If the frog is worried, what is it worried about? How do you think it got in there? How long do you think it will stay there? And it was actually a photograph photographed in Nepal by a photographer called Navesh Chitrakar in Nepal in 2009, a frog on a lotus leaf. So that's the basic idea. Now you might be thinking, well, that was quite, I like that, Jamie, you know, but it was a bit teacher centered, you know, the teacher did most of the work. Okay. It was a good for a listening activity, wasn't it? But you know, where does this go from here? Now, I think that's a really good question. And if some of you are asking that, well done. Here's the trick. You prepared your text, give your students a copy of the text. Give your students the text. In this case, I draw attention to some of the language of deduction, some of the language that allows us to ask questions or hypothesize about the image. You can see those phrases, those words there in bold. And then quite simply, you ask students to go online, type in wildlife image, find one of their own in an image search. There's so many fantastic images for them to choose from. And then what they do quite simply is they choose an image they like and they create a similar text, similar shape, similar size, similar language using this one as a model for one of their own. So you're giving students a model text, you're modeling the task, you're allowing them to do this in their own time then when they've done it, they can get into circles, they can share their, their texts, they can do it just as the teacher did, you know, picture tell their images to each other, or if you prefer, you can do it presentation style. Students come up to the front of the class, communicate their images to each other as a storyteller would. And by the way, I've got this for, I've got this for you. This is a lesson plan for you. It's called Frog in a Raindrop. And if you'd like this, all you have to do is go to my website, my website is, is lessonstream.com. This is it right here. And all you have to do is, um, well, click on the pink button and I'll send you the, the lesson plan. Not only that, but I'll add you to the lesson stream post. It's all free and I'll share with you my storytelling ideas. Um, maybe once or twice a month, I usually send that out. So yes. So did you enjoy that?